Hello folks, welcome back to the Panzer. There is but one question that the clickbaiter in me needs to ask right now, and it goes something like this. Will the free, abandoned, cheapest Panzer in the universe run and drive 15 light years after being abandoned for a thousand years? Stay with us to find out. So folks, it has been a while since we've looked at the Panzer. Much to my shame um, that that amount of time has passed, but hey, got a lot of stuff going on here, so that's my excuse. Now, since you last saw her, we have got a bit done. So, firstly, the battery. The battery uh, consists of, let's see, what is it? Uh, two Gen 2 uh, BMW 530E packs, so 12 kilowatt hours each. Uh, there's a total per pack of six of these modules. And our battery box here contains 12. And they're assembled onto these 12 millimeter aluminium plates. So the modules bolt through with some threaded bar with the plate being uh, sandwiched in the middle. And that is all contained within this stainless steel battery box, uh, 1.5 mil wall thickness. These modules are guided um, by these kind of guides, there's a set on the side and two sets on the bottom and they'll be bolted into uh, the box also. I additionally stripped down the old uh, high voltage junction box which was cringe city uh, and got out the bits that I need such as contactors, service disconnect, fuses, uh, pre-charge resistor and all that good stuff and we'll be getting involved fairly soon with getting uh, all these components mounted in here, getting the holes drilled for the cabling and that sort of thing. Now, uh, the box itself um, is mounted onto this piece of uh, 100 millimeter, uh, I think it's four mil wall uh, stainless box section. And that comes in here, and that mounts to the two um, engine mounting points. We then have another piece of stainless uh, that'll run across the front, and that'll pick up on the uh, front part of the battery box here. Now, this is as far as we've, we've got. So we got our two BMW packs stripped down, got all of these battery modules in here. As I say, we're getting ready to uh, to get that battery pack ready to install into the vehicle. But before we can do any of that, uh, and definitely before we put the battery in here uh, permanently, we needed to do a little bit of wiring, as you can see. So, some of you may recall, we originally had our Ampera battery here, and we had the fire on the BMS taps uh, right around the bulkhead firewall area, which unfortunately is where uh, the main engine bay wiring harness goes. So uh, when I powered up the car here, um, Almost none of the 12 volt systems worked. Uh, there was a load of blown fuses and all of these wires, which you see here, sprayed along the ground, like so this, were uh, completely melted and fused together. So there was kind of no saving them or too far gone. So what we had to do was to get in here and cut out, really, cut out the damaged 
wire and splice in uh, fresh wire here into any of the ones uh, that were damaged. So that was a very tedious, very boring process. I didn't, uh, didn't really think there'd be any benefit to bringing you folks along for that because it was just rinse and repeat. But we have it done and I have started to get um, signal wires that I need to interface to the vehicle uh, sorted out here. Um, so all fuses replaced, all 12 volt systems are back up and running. Yeah, and as I said, I'm getting signal wires now, starting to get them brought out to the e-box. Now, as you'll see, the e-box is missing because Moron here, in his infinite wisdom, at some point in the plan, decided he didn't need it. Well, we do. Unfortunately, it's no longer available from BMW, uh, but I was lucky in that I found uh, someone breaking one of these over in the UK and got the whole thing on the way, I think for about 60, uh, 65 or something like that. Euros, definitely less than 70 anyway. So we'll have the normal e-box back in here. And into that, we'll be putting our Zombieverter VCU. So you might be saying, well, what do we want the Zombieverter VCU in there for? Um, isn't it a fairly old car? Uh, do we actually need it? And the answer for that, for that is we want to do a better job this time around with the vehicle to drivetrain integration. It's kind of hard to believe, but I, it's nearly 10 years ago that I purchased the Panzer. It's been through several conversions, as we know, uh, since then. Um, each one of them, I'd like to think, getting a little bit better. So it was actually kind of cringeworthy um, when I was going in there ripping out some of the stuff that I had previously done. Now, that also means that we will have a module for the VCU uh, for integrating with things like analog um, instrument cluster, pulse driven tachometer, and um, oh, what do we call it? Um, pulses, pulse derived uh, speedometer, so getting vehicle speed from, uh, from pulses and all that kind of thing. There is also the interesting um, potential to connect to the slip control module via CAN so we can implement traction control uh, with the Panzer. And with our Tesla drive unit, uh, that's rather important. There have been some very significant um, advances in the open inver inverter control um, algorithm as it relates to induction motors and uh, that is resulting in some very nice drivability um, impro impro improvements but also some tremendous um, horsepower gains. Now I spent some time in the UK there a week ago um, unfortunately, I can't say too much about that, uh, but it's a vehicle that has the large drive unit in it. And uh, so I'm starting to get some experience of that. So when I came back here, I kind of had a renewed impetus uh, to get the Panzer back rolling. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, over the next, hopefully, about another two or three weeks, we should have the car driving because all going well, I'm just going to spend my time on this now as much as possible. So, we're going to have the VCU uh, looking after the car. It will also control the drive unit via CAN. Now, this is the open inverter board. We're not doing any Musco CAN hacking or anything like that, just so there's no um, confusion there. But we'll get everything uh, hopefully better integrated. We have our total of 24 kilowatt hour battery there now with our two BMW packs. Um, 
So we'll have those mounted in the front, so the battery in the front, stainless steel box. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll get it all hooked up. So that is kind of about where we're at with the Panzer. Uh, not a very exciting update. Sorry, there's no burnouts or uh, skids. Uh, but, ho but hopefully that'll be coming soon. Uh, one thing I want to say before I wrap the video up is I want to really thank uh, folks that uh, following our BMS harness fire crap, um, I got a tremendous amount of support, both in, you know, just saying nice things and also donating parts uh, to help get the car back on the road. The most significant of which was the donation of those two BMW um, 12 kilowatt hour hybrid battery packs. But there's been other stuff as well, like Johannes um, donated a new Logic board. This is his version six of the large drive unit Logic board. Um, so, oh yeah, that brings me along to the drive unit, actually. There's one, one last, last thing that I have to mention. So, yeah, just wanted to say th thank you to the folks that have um, supported me on getting this car back mo moving and apologies. It's been, I don't know, six months now since I've managed to look at it, but I'm here now, I'm wor working on it, and thank you very much. So, uh, Tesla Drive unit in this vehicle, as you may recall, some of you long-suffering people who have some weird reason stayed subscribed to this stupid channel, which is a bad idea. Anyway. That this was installed in Dave's wor workshop, um, and it had the very first... Uh, version 2, the version 1 logic board didn't work because I'd made loads of mistakes on it, but this is the first hand-soldered uh, version 2 board in there. Uh, and that's worked away fine, uh, but we would like to upgrade that to the version 6 board um, that Johannes um, and others uh, um, now sell. So... Uh, reasons for that are mainly twofold. One, my old V2 does not have onboard Wi-Fi. And the second thing is, what I did on the version 2 board was I put a jumper system on there so that on the wires uh, going out on the 23-pin connector, uh, the CAN wires <clears throat> could either be serial uh, for communicating with the web interface or they could be CAN. So obviously we didn't have CAN functionality in Open Inverter back then. So I had to go ahead and set them to um, serial. And I had this little external serial board for the Wi-Fi and all this kind of thing. So we'd like to change that board out so that we have CAN coming out on the CAN because we are going to CAN control the Open Inverter board from the Zombieverter VCU. Um, we would also like then to have the Wi-Fi on board the logic board uh, so that we don't need to worry about that. It's just in there and we can access it as required. Now, to do that traditionally would mean dropping the drive unit down out of the subframe, taking the can off, sw swapping the board um, and getting everything hooked back up and starting up. Now, kind of two problems there. First is, I don't really have the time or the facilities here to drop the, the subframe out and do that kind of work. I could do it, uh, but it's going to take a long time and it'll probably generate problems for me. Second thing is, I don't really have an ability to fully test the board other than put it into the drive unit. So if I put it in the drive unit and I hook it all back up again, um, I'm in further trouble there. So what we're going to do try and do and this will be definitely one to i'll do it so you don't have to is we're going to cut a window into the can uh, that goes over the inverter that's going to give us access from underneath the vehicle 
to the logic board. So we can take it out, swap the new one in, do any modifications, and I'll make a polycarbonate cover then that will screw up uh, with a gasket around it and seal up over the can. We'll do two things. It'll let me have access to that board in the future if I need it easily. Just jack up the car, get in, do what I need to do, let it back down. And secondly, that size of a window in there will let the Wi-Fi goodness in and out. So, obviously, and you know, just hello, I don't intend just breaking out the old angle grinder and going in there and cutting that. I have some ideas how to do, do it, but if you, the greater internet, have any thoughts or pointers on that, then drop a comment below, please. Now, Hopefully, by now, this video will have gone on for long enough so that it doesn't get recommended to any innocent souls browsing for electric vehicle content. But if it did, remember, dislike, unshare, unsubscribe, and for Pete's sake, do not check the links in the description for Patreon and PayPal and stuff, because if you support me, look what happens. I do more of these cars, I do more of these stupid videos, and you're the ones that get stuck watching me. So, until next time, folks. Happy wiring loom fixing.